An artist up in drafting section made this gadget for me to show how overshooting accidents happen with the P-47. It's simple, almost kid stuff. But in my job, the first thing you learn is that most P-47 accidents are caused by simple mistakes. The kind of thing a pilot learns to avoid on a primary trainer, like overshooting. Once I even worked out a series of designs for runways that would take care of the problem. This one tilts up at the end. And this one is banked to take care of the excess speed. They don't make sense yet. It looks like we're going to use the conventional runway for a long time. And a lot of pilots are going to make the simple mistake of overshooting them. It happens in various ways. Usually the pilot lets down onto the runway in the normal manner. And that's when his troubles begin. He may come in too fast to start with. He may misjudge the remaining stretch of the runway. Hello, Jig 2-4. This is Jackson Tower. Clear the runway. Fighters landing behind you. Or he may get rattled and gun the engine too much. Whatever the cause, he can't stop. And it's too late to use brakes. Well, there's only one thing to remember. We have nice long runways. But you must land on the first third. Land with full flaps. Once you're down, don't gun your engine. Use your brakes carefully and watch the runway markers. It's hard to figure out sometimes why an intelligent pilot will slip up on these things. Obviously, one reason is carelessness. A fellow gets to thinking he's pretty hot and overlooks something elementary. Or he may get a little rattled when something unexpected happens, forgetting that there's no mystery to flying the P-47. It uses the same air and operates on the same principle as any other airplane. It's just a whole lot faster and more powerful than the trainers you've flown. This album is full of the results of those mistakes. I'm going to tell you about some of them. And as it happens, there isn't any picture for this one. I had to leave a blank space for it. You'll see why in a minute. A few months ago, an aerial gunnery mission consisting of a tow plane and a flight of four P-47s was briefed preparatory to a scheduled 0830 takeoff. The visibility here in the field is 5 miles. All right, visibility here at the field is 5 miles. But the base weather station warns us that a cold front may move in suddenly later this morning. They report a low ceiling between here and the gunnery range. So the tow plane here had better check the weather along the route to the gunnery range and over it. Now, if at any time the weather starts to look bad for the mission, I want you to return to base and land. Got it? They got it, all except the one man who should have, the flight leader. OK, let's go. The tow plane was off first. The others waited for the tower to clear them before takeoff. In a few minutes, the tow plane was over the gunnery range. The pilot reported an overcast at a thousand feet and was instructed to check a little further before returning. Meanwhile, the flight leader became impatient and requested permission to take off. He was told what the conditions were and the decision left up to him. He decided to take off. This was his first mistake. He should have waited for more information. A few minutes later, the report came in from the tow plane. The overcast was heavy all over the area, and the pilot recommended the cancellation of the mission. But by the time the tower had ordered the mission to return, the flight of P-47s had already found out about the overcast for themselves. Now the flight leader made his second mistake, much more serious than the first. He let down through the overcast, instead of going back to base over it. The rest of his flight tried to follow him, but lost sight of him in the soup. They gradually worked down to 100 feet. At this altitude, they caught glimpses of water. 
racked it back and began to climb up on top. When they got into the clear, the flight leader was not in sight. They headed back to the field, where visibility was still good. They landed without him. Hello, gangplank leader. This is Newton Tower. Give me a call. Over. Hello, gangplank leader. This is Newton Tower. Give me a call. Over. Hello, gangplank leader. This is... Gangplank leader never answered. A fishing boat nearby saw him skimming over the water and then flying in. That's why we don't have a picture for that blank page. Sergeant, let me see those salvage items. Yes, sir. They're in the file. There you are, sir. Fine. Will that be all, Major? Yes, thank you. We do have these. That flight leader made three mistakes, each more serious than the one before. We've seen two of them. The first was flying into the local overcast. The second was a failure to make his turn back to base on top, where he knew the weather was good. But his worst mistake was flying so low, way below minimum altitude restrictions. He did get under the overcast because he was seen from a boat. But the water was smooth and he probably never realized he was so close to it. Remember, smooth water is very deceptive that way. So, number one, he should never have started until he was sure of the weather. Number two, he should have made his turn to base while on top. And number three, he should not have gone below 500 feet. You've seen what happened to that P-47 flight leader. It's in the Air Force records. 100% pilot error. Now this represents another kind of mistake, a very common one. Take a look. See that dent? There's a gash near the wing root. Another one in the wing. Here's a closer shot. That was done by the stiffening bar in a towed flag target. You've all seen this bar. It's a bad thing to fly into, but it has been done time and again. And here's how. You're flying a pursuit curve. At the right moment in your pass, you squirt, and your bullets cut the tow rope. If you try to fly under it, you may fly into it. If you pull up and over, you'll be all right. It's as simple as that. Whenever you can't see the target, pull up and resume the pattern. Of course, the basic rule is never get too close to your target. If you lose sight of it, break off, because the chances are you're too close. And in any case, if you shoot off the target, or lose sight of it, always pull up. That will prevent 99% of the cases of flying into the target. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now this one caused plenty of damage. And here's how it happened. It was during a formation flight, not very high. Everything seemed to be normal. The pilot was flying on the auxiliary tank. Now watch what happened. The pilot didn't know it, but the tank was empty. All at once, the pilot checked the prop and switched to manual. Not until then did he see that the auxiliary tank was empty and switched to full tank. By that time, the engine would not catch. He was below a thousand feet. The only thing to do was look for an open field. There was one, fortunately. But landing in it was one of those flap down, wheels up, switches cut, hold your hat affairs. P-47 is tough, and you can walk away from emergency landings like this, if you're lucky. This pilot made just one mistake. He failed to investigate his fuel supply until after he had checked his prop. He wasted time. You should always check your fuel and switch tanks before you get into this kind of trouble. You can bet he knows better now. Here's a classic. This sport really goofed off. 
The pilot made a perfectly normal landing. He rolled along with everything under control. onto the taxi strip. Going back to the parking ramp, he asked, so he could see what he was doing. All highly commendable. Apparently, everything was going too well. But when he reached for the flap lever, he either didn't look, or didn't think, or both. He retracted the landing gear. The flap lever and the landing gear lever are close together, that's true. But they don't look alike, and they don't feel alike, and they don't operate the same way. I guess you'd call that 200% pilot error. But it can happen if you're not on the ball. Well, there you are. Five accidents, all avoidable. Retraction of landing gear while on the ground, Improper tank selection causing forced landing. Collision with target during aerial gunnery. Flying too low under overcast and diving into the water. And overshooting the runway. Pilot error in every case. None of them difficult to prevent, like almost all accidents, but plenty costly to the airplane and to the pilot. It's just a matter of paying attention to what you're doing and remembering that always, always in the air or on the ground, when you're in a P-47, you're the pilot, not a passenger.